Hi, today we're going to begin making a game. Let's get into it. The FPS genre is an incredibly competitive market, and it's clotted with all kinds of subgenres. Recently, the classic FPS market has been dominated by Call of Duty, Halo, and Battlefield, but as we saw with Battlefield 2042, the AAA shooter market is getting a little old for some. I think a lot of FPS players want something new, by which I kind of mean old. The second game I ever played after Pokemon Blue was Goldeneye 007 on the Nintendo 64. By modern standard, it's now obsolete, antiquated, and probably rather boring for most, but back then it was my life. An array of finely tuned levels, split screen PvP, and a certain flow and dynamism to movement and gunplay that I've never felt since. It worked because of all the things that we now call old. The hardware was worse, design conventions were yet to be invented, and the subject matter wasn't exactly novel. Yet there's beauty in simplicity. The feel of movement, the crisp sound design, and the expansive objective system still captures my memory even today. And the same is true if we go back another 10 years or so. Doom and Quake clones defined the early era of FPS gaming as we know it, and were very similar in their limitations, but also the perfection of what they did actually feature. I'm just one guy, so using this approach of a simplistic set of core ideas, honing them to perfection, is a good place to start for a new game. Especially as a retro aesthetic will be both nostalgic and easier for me, as I'm not very skilled at 3D modeling. So we have our genre, the indie retro FPS market. Over the last five years, many similar-minded titles have been released, from the Doom-like Dusk to the movement shooter Ultra Kill. They vary in their execution, but all still rely on the basic principles of the OG retro shooters, just adding in their own twists. As I progress, I'm going to define my own take on the genre, with a focus on narrative elements, a persistent campaign mode, and a big sci-fi setting. But for now, let's get stuck into the first part of development. Designers use so-called pillars to guide development of games. Pillars are essentially just core ideas or themes that we want to base the game around. By tailoring all mechanics and features to these pillars, we end up with a cohesive experience for the player. The exact kind of design that made simplistic retro shooters so great. Honed levels, juicy gunplay, and smooth movement. Well, before we can get into gunplay or levels, we need movement, so let's boot up Unreal 4 and get right into it. We'll begin by using the first person template to get a character partially set up for us, and begin by removing the unnecessary components. Then, we'll make some quick changes to the basic movement parameters to increase our base movement speed, acceleration, gravity, and jump height. And already, just walking around in this setup level, movement feels tighter and smoother. One of my favourite parts of Goldeneye is the smoothness of the movement, the subtle bounce of the gun, the angling of the weapon to imply auto-aim, and the simplistic vertical movement for reloading and weapon swapping just works. Doom also has a smooth weapon sway that conveys movement, speed, control, and weight all at once. So, I'll import a low poly gun in from online. For now, we'll just use free assets and we can replace or edit them later. Next, I'll set up two camera shake blueprints. These will cause the camera to move relative to the rest of the player. But, because we're seeing through the camera, this actually creates the illusion of the weapon bobbing up and down, although really, it's the camera bobbing down and up. By selecting between a low amplitude shake and a high amplitude shake, based on the player's current movement speed, we already get a great sense of speed and motion. The addition of a third high amplitude shake for landing is also a nice touch. I'm not sure if we're going to want to keep jumping in the game, as it causes a lot of questions to arise about level design and AI design. Next up, our other core pillar of gunplay. Having worked as a professional designer on multiple Unreal Engine FPS titles, I have a pretty standardised flow for setting up weapons, so I want to quickly bang out a master data file. This will allow us to create as many data files as we want for new weapons, allowing us to set all kinds of parameters, such as max magazine size, damage, sound effects, and even particle systems. We can use this to create a new weapon type in just seconds, as we'll draw from the currently equipped weapons data file whenever we shoot or reload it. It makes our code very modular because of this. For example, when shooting, we check if the current weapon is a projectile weapon or not. If it is, we get the projectile reference straight from the file, and we spawn it in. If not, we draw a line trace directly forwards and we apply the current weapon's damage value directly from the data file again on whatever the line hits. By swapping the data file when we swap the weapons, the damage value, the particles, the projectiles will all swap dynamically in runtime and make the code really easy to use. I've gone ahead and set up the data file for the shotgun, giving it a slight spread. This affects the angle of the rotation of the shots at their origin points, setting a random number within a set range. This means spread distribution is currently random per shot, but over time and over more shots, it'll average out evenly. This may need some tweaking in future to bias shots towards the center if it begins to feel unfair, but it should work fine for now. 
Repeating this process with some new assets and adding a quick weapon switching system gives us this. A hitscan pistol, a hitscan shotgun, and a projectile rocket launcher. The system currently works with the number keys and features the ability to cancel a swap early by re-inputting the currently unequipping weapon. Additionally, inputting a new weapon type whilst unequipping your current weapon will swap to the most recently input new weapon type. So overall, it's very smooth and responsive, and with a simple timeline-based animation to move the weapons down and then up, we get a nice retro-looking effect. Here, I've gone and imported some more free assets and had a play with post-processing. In the end, I'm planning on a far more sci-fi look, but I think this setup totally validates my love and passion for retro shooters. Just a few hours work on just the most core components, and you can already feel the smoothness, dynamism, and weight to the gameplay. And that's it for the first devlog on this channel. Please leave a comment below on your thoughts on this project, and subscribe to receive notice of future videos. It would be really great to begin building a community who can be active in providing feedback and input as the game is being developed. Currently, I've just quit my job at a game studio to start my own indie company with some friends. This is a side project, so I have a little change of pace when I need it. So any and all support you can provide is appreciated as I take this big leap in my game development life. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.